Thank you for joining me once again on Crunch Econometrics. Today we shall be discussing VAR and four ways of checking for causality using EVUs. So what is causality? In a statement such as S causes Y, this can have the following meaning in different scenarios to different disciplines. Meaning such as X leads Y, or X is the only cause of Y, X is one of the possible causes of Y, X must always lead to Y, that is, X determines Y. You can also say that the occurrence of X makes the occurrence of Y more probable, that is, X is a probabilistic cause of Y. X must occur either before or simultaneously with Y, but not afterwards. You are simply saying that the future of X cannot predict the past. So X must always occur before Y. Then the past values of X forecast future values of Y. So these are the different interpretations of causality in different scenarios and in different disciplines. So now let's talk about causality in time series analysis. We know that regression analysis deals with the dependence of one variable on other variables, but that does not necessarily imply causation. In other words, the existence of a relationship between variables does not prove causality or the direction of influence. But when you are talking about time series analysis, the situation is somehow different. Still talking about time series analysis, a statistical relationship in itself cannot logically imply causation. But you can imply causation by subjecting that series to several tests. That is what that statement means. Also, to ascribe causality, one must appeal to either a priori expectation or theoretical consideration. The is that in regression modeling, the underlying theory will indicate the direction of causality between y and x which in the context of a single equation model is generally from x to y, x being the regressor, the independent variable, or the explanatory variable, and y being the regressant, the dependent variable, and the variable being explained. Like I said previously, the future of x cannot predict the past value of y. So it's always the reverse. So the past values of X will be the one to forecast or predict future values of Y. So now let's take a look at some prerequisites that must be in place before you can engage causality checks in VAR. Number one, the series must be stationary. That is, they must be integrated of the same order. Number two, you must know that when you are doing causality checks, the number of lags you are going to use in your model must be those lags determined by the information criterion. What does that mean? It means that the model is sensitive to the number of lags that you are going to use. The error terms entering that model or that you are going to use in the causality test must not be correlated. Then, if you are proceeding to establish a vector autoregression model, then there must be evidence of cointegration. Even though cointegration indicates the presence of Ranger causality in at least one direction, it does not indicate the direction of causality between variables. So after doing cointegration, it gives you an idea that there's causality in this model, but it does not tell you between the variables where the direction of causality is. Also, the direction of Ranger causality in this case will be detected through the error correction mechanism that you have derived from the long run cointegrating vectors. Please note that talking about cointegration is just by way of information. Cointegration is not required if you are just doing an unrestricted VAR. That is a short run model. But I'm only discussing it just for you to know by way of information, okay? So cointegration is not a requirement when you are just doing the unrestricted VAR, which is a short run model. So on the screen, is a specification of a three-variable VAR system, where I have log of PCE, PDI, and GDP. And you can see the model neatly spelled out 
indicating the respective lags for each of the variables in the model. Again, remember, in the VAR system, there are no exogenous variables. All the variables in the VAR system are all endogenous. All the variables are all endogenous. Now let's take a look at the model characteristics which I've explained below. The K here that you can see up here is the optimal lag length determined from any of the information criterion. Schwarz, HQ, AIC. Okay, so you don't just arbitrarily use lags in a VAR model. You must pick your lags from either of these um, information criterion. I have several videos on optimal lag selection. Please, I will advise you to watch them. Then the alpha, uh, sigma, and delta signs here, these are just the intercepts of each of these equations. Then the betas here, phi's and gamma, are all short-run dynamic coefficients of this model. Remember, VAR model is a short-run model. So beta, phi, and um, gamma are all short-run coefficients. While the UIs are all the error terms, which must not be correlated with one another. Please subscribe to my videos if you have not. I need your comments so that I can improve the quality of these videos. If you like my tutorial so far, give me your thumbs up and please share my uh, links of my YouTube channel with your friends and cohorts. So let's look at the types of causality. Short-run causal effect is true either the F statistics of the relevant tests that we are going to look at and the statistical significance of the regressors. So you can determine short-run causal effect through those mediums. Long-run causal effect can also be determined through the statistical significance of the error correction term. This is only applicable to VECM. In the same vein, joint causal effects can be observed through the F statistics and the significance of the independent variables and also the statistical relevance of the error correction term. Again, this only applies to VECM. What about unidirectional causality? This occurs from x to y if the set of estimated coefficients of the lagged x are significantly different from zero and the set of estimated coefficients of the lagged y are not significantly different from zero. This is what this means. In estimation, if the coefficient of PDI is not zero, but after estimating the equation of PDI, the coefficient of PCE here is zero. So that means causality is only coming from PDI to PCE. So that is a unidirectional causality. So let me use this one also to explain bidirectional causality. After estimating equation PCE, and the coefficient of PDI is significantly different from zero. You also estimated equation PDI, and the coefficient of PCE, beta here, is also significantly different from zero. So that means there is bicausality from PCE to PDI and PDI to PCE. That is what that means. So unidirectional is when it's going just in one directional. Bidirectional is when there is a feedback between the variables. Now let me explain independent causality. It simply means when both coefficients are zero. After estimating PCE and you observe that the coefficient of PDI is zero, and you also estimated PDI and you observe that the coefficient of PCE is zero, it means between these variables there is no causality. So there is independence of causality between these variables. So bidirectional and independence are what I just explained using the model I showed you just now. So what are the four ways to check causality in this my tutorial? The first way is by looking at the T statistics of the regressors. If they are statistically significant, then we can infer causality. That is one way to check. The second way to check is by testing with the Granger World Causality Test in the eViews interface. And what does this test do? 
it tests the joint relevance of the lagged explanatory variables of the lagged coefficients. And this is the null stated here, and here is the alternative. And what will be your decision criteria? You reject the null if the probability value of the chi-square statistic is lower than 0.05. Third way to check is through the world coefficient test. And the world coefficient test is simply telling you that these coefficients in this model are equal to zero, meaning they cannot cause a change in the dependent variable. And what will be your decision criteria? You reject the null hypothesis if the probability value of the chi-square statistic is lower than 0.05. The fourth way to check is using the pairwise Granger causality test. What this test does is to give you the direction of causality. The null hypothesis is that there is no Granger causality against the alternative that the null hypothesis is not true. And what would be your decision criteria? You reject the null hypothesis if the probability value of the F statistic is lower than 0.05. So these are the four ways I'm going to put you through to check for causality in your model, if that is the way you are going in your research or in that paper that you are writing. What are the step-by-step -step procedures in eViews? Number one, you have to specify the model, engage stationarity test, make sure that all your series are integrated of the same order, determine the optimal lags using the information criterion, estimate the unrestricted VAR. Now go ahead to perform your causality test using the various ways I just explained. Now for anyone to take our results with any uh, pinch of seriousness, we have to perform some diagnostics as you can see on the screen. So stay with me, don't go away. Make sure you subscribe to my channel Give me your comments. Like I said before, I enjoy your feedback. I want to improve the quality of this video. Give me a thumbs up if you like my tutorial so far. And please share my link among with your friends and your colleagues. I will conclude by saying that the t-statistics of the explanatory variable will indicate short-run causal effect. The f-statistics and chi-square statistics from Granger and Wall test will also indicate short-run causal effects since we are only discussing VAR in this tutorial. And remember that each of these causality tests or checks can serve as robustness or evidence of validation for one another. If you need to engage more references for whoever is interested, you can look up Gujarati and Porter Basic Econometrics Textbook. You can also look at Woodridge Introductory Econometrics, a Modern Approach Textbooks, and there are several journal articles who have used VAR and Granger causality tests in their papers. Thank you for staying with me. Support my channel with 1,000 subscribers. I love to teach econometrics to beginners or to intermediate or professional users. Share my link with your friends and cohorts. Don't go away. I'll be right back to put you through the various ways to check for causality.